to you live above the Heineken River Deck here in New York City. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Anthony Rose, I have one simple question for you. Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Basketball! I'm really excited for my hometown team, and I felt this was going to be the year for it to happen because... Losing my mother in February, we bonded over basketball, and the Pistons were her favorite team. And the last time the Pistons selected a guard number one overall was my biological father, Jimmy Walker, in 1967. So I felt this was going to be our turn, in particular since there's a consensus number one pick. So shout to my good friend, owner Tom Gores and Platinum Equity, Arm Tellum, and I'll say this to Kay Cunningham. A lot of fan bases, like Big Sean would say, are going to be in your circle. Detroit area player, Detroit area fans are going to be in your corner. They're going to shout what up, though, to you. You're going to be bossing up. You're going to understand about the no-fly zone and the Earl Flynn and the Jit. You're going to know that Detroit versus everybody t-shirt started in the 313. Motown, Motor City, Jefferson, Woodward. He's going to put on the show. He's a fantastic young man. He's going to be a terrific um, contributor on the floor. And I'm really happy that he's only working out for one team. And that's the squad that has the number one overall pick. My Detroit Pistons with the best in-game announcer in the game, Mason, who everybody around the league still copies. I will say that there are certain years, not all not all number one picks are equal. And this year, you have a true number one consensus. We know exactly who it's going to be. All we're going to talk about is who's going to go number two. And that's a great year to have the number one pick. Congratulations to Pistons and their fans. Jalen, they've announced the roster of Team USA. And uh, there's uh, some interesting names on the list. What do you think about the roster? I'm excited about the roster. And I assume and I know we're going to win the gold. But I'm disappointed in something. As I do this show every day, I do it in front of a picture of Tommy Smith and John Carlos raising their fists at the Olympics. I also know the favoritism that Christian Leitner was shown when he got a chance to be put on the dream team ahead of Shaq and Alonzo, but they made it so that a college player could even get on and gave him favoritism. But this level of, and I got a word for it, Kevin Love is on the team because of tokenism. Don't be scared to make an all-black team representing the United States of America. I'm disappointed by that. Anybody that watched the league this year knows Kevin Love did not have a stellar season, was not the best player on his team, and did not necessarily deserve to be on this squad. And I'm not going to take him off the squad and not put somebody else on it. I'm going to tell you whose spot that should be. That should be a young man that was born in the Bahamas, that is a McDonald's All-American, played in high school and college in Phoenix, Arizona. DeAndre Ayton should have Kevin Love's spot. And I'm disappointed in Team USA for not having the courage to send an all-black team to the Olympics. Jalen, head coach of the Golden State Warriors, Steve Kerr, had something very interesting to say about Kevin Durant. He said that he is more gifted than Michael Jordan. What do you think about those comments? More gifted means he's taller. He's a better three-point shooter. But I ain't seen too many people make a double clutch game-winning shot over Craig Elo. I just haven't seen too many people do that. And I look deeper into the box score and after watching The Last Dance, the world now knows Steve Curtin had the best relationship with Michael Jordan. Like Mm -hmm. anybody that punches you in the face, Y'all have never had a best relationship. (laughs) And how about Kevin Durant? He went to Golden State and won two championships there. They didn't necessarily seem so fine after he left. That's why he's gone. So one is still in the league. And if Steve Kerr says anything about KD, not only will fans dispel it, but KD may clap back. So for Steve Kerr, you put it in neutral and allow KD to get his shine when you know Michael Eric Jeffrey Jordan is the greatest gifted scorer that this game has seen. Look at scoring titles, look at average per game, look at playoff average. This debate, I know that people that haven't seen MJ play will think that, but MJ is the answer to this actual question. 
We need to stop comparing people to Michael Jordan. It's just unfair. It's, it really just need to stop comparing people to Michael Jordan. And more gift is just a hedge. He's not better than Michael Jordan. He's not a better scorer than Michael Jordan. He's not a better offensive player than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is the GOAT, and it's that simple. Jalen Rose, I don't know if you know this, but a gentleman by the name of Alex Caruso was um, arrested in Texas on possession. TSA found a grinder in his bag. Dog, wherever you're flying to, they have grinders there. Like, why are you flying with the grinder? Yeah. Is, wherever you are flying to, they have grinders there. Come on, AC. Hey, dog, don't be mad at AC for being out here on his grind, dog. Don't be mad at him, dog. <laughs> Rise and grind. No, hey, dog, he's an NBA player, dog. He ain't trying to get to town and go to a gas station and buy a grinder in front of fans that want to take pictures, dog. That is not how this works. You throw it in your bag, and you think that you don't have the treats, you just have the grinder, so you're going to be good. And then they stretch you out in a state where they allow people to basically carry a gun like a driver's license, but then they mm -hmm. want to over emphasize marijuana and again in 2021 can we stop over emphasizing marijuana and adult entertainment like these are things that have been happening since the beginning of the time i know that they try to act like that they're taboo but these are things that it's okay for alex caruso to partake if he chooses i'm actually disappointed that he actually got arrested he forgot about that little compartment on the bottom of the grinder. Come on, Alex. You forgot about the little Keith compartment. And, Jalen, we have some breaking news that has to do with your franchise, the Indiana Pacers. They have a new head coach. We'll tell you who that is right after this. You are watching. Jalen. We made it to these conference finals, but we're not satisfied. We worked extremely hard to be in this moment. But the job is not done. It's now or never, not gonna never, even a minute late. Look out. Here comes Trey. He shoots the three. They left him wide open. Now or never, the clock is ticking. My ambitions will not last the pressure. The Florida Giannis slams it. Rebound by Clint Capella up and in. These Atlanta Hawks folks never, ever count them out. It's been fun playing with this group. We just keep fighting to the end, no matter what the score is. He is Jalen Rose. I am David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What, what is up, it that we do? We get the people! What they what? Of course, we're going to talk about the Western Conference Finals Game 3 tonight. Of course, we're going to talk about the Pistons winning the lottery. But we start with Trey Young in Milwaukee with the shots, with the floaters, with the assists. Ice Trey, the game, took over the game, scored 48, and brought a win for the Hawks. Jalen Rose, what did you think about this virtuistic performance? I from think I'm I say, I'm I say, I'm I say, I'm I say. That's what I think. And here's the deal, David Jacoby. That young man is not only being incredibly productive, but I like the flash and the flavor that he brings to the floor. Not only with this unlimited range shooting from 30 plus feet, but how about dimes off the backboard to John Collins? How about getting a little shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, yo, shimmy, ya? <laughs> when he opened for three and they give him some range. And then his float, float on game has been outstanding. And so I'm old enough to remember when the Nets we're supposed to come out of the East. I'm not mm -hmm. old enough to remember the process and all of the changes that happened with that team. And yet the Atlanta Hawks are beating the Milwaukee Bucks 1-0 in the Eastern Conference Finals. This is incredible for Nate McMillan, that franchise, and this basketball team. It's that shot right there. It is Trey Young holding up the one, which I love the mentality is, yeah, we had a big win. Yeah, that's emotional. But right after the game, he's like, that's only one, and we need four to get to the NBA Finals. And Trey Young didn't do it alone. Yes, of course, he scored or assisted 72 of 116 points for the Hawks, but they got a big game from friend of Jalen and Jacoby, John Collins. John Collins was efficient, he was active on both ends of the floor, and he was a key contributor in this victory. What do you think about JC's performance? I think I always try to make sure I acknowledge what makes players look different to me. And I was watching John Collins, I was like, wait a minute, he catching lobs off the backboard and he making corner threes. I normally don't see players do that. And so I did some stat hunting. Do you realize in the last 25 years of the NBA, there have only been three players that make at least 60 threes and 60 dunks in the season? Sean Marion, Anthony Davis, and John Collins. 
Because usually the guy that's making threes ain't dunking on people and or vice versa. So when you see his productivity, along with Gallo, who made a couple of buckets up front, shot the red, Velvet, who's been giving them quality yeah. minutes, Bogey, who's been in and out of the lineup trying to fight through a knee injury and play good minutes, Solomon Hill. Like, they're getting so many players that are playing their best basketball at the right time of the season. And, man, if you're the Indiana Pacers, you actually fired Nate McMillan. <laughs> you actually fired Nate right McMillan. Right after signing him to an extension, After too. signing him to an extension and then hiring a coach that you fire after one season, that is not a good look. So it's time to turn our attention to the Bucks because it seemed like after timeouts, they would just get